Welcome to a presentation of the Blend Phonics Chart English Sound Assembly Associations. Uh, we're going to be looking, this is a mini course for parents. Uh, it'll be a scientifically accurate, but um, we're going to try and make the presentation as simple as we, and understandable as we can to the average parent or new school teacher and so it's a mini course in linguistics which will help you to understand all the English speech sounds <clears throat> there are this is the main chart we're going to be using It's the chart without the pictures and let me show you here there's another chart which has pictures and of key words that I use to teach the sounds but we're going to be looking only at the uh, the chart that does not have the sounds. Two other components with the program, and I'll just show them quickly. These are Blend Phonics picture sound cards that you can run off and uh, on cardstock or laminate and make your own flashcards for teaching the sounds. And here you can see all of the pictures and sounds that we're going to teach. There's also a, another document that's called uh, facial diagrams <clears throat> and this teaches the uh, articulation the physical movement of the mouth to produce the sounds and again we have it, um, the key word here will be pig we have a picture of the mouth an explanation of how to produce the sounds and what we call minimal pairs that will help you to teach your students there's also an articulation test that you can give your students at the end of this to make sure that they have what we call phonemic uh, they can produce the sounds, also can hear the sounds, and have what we call phonemic awareness. Okay, let's launch right into this. I want to keep it as short as I possibly can, and yet complete. Uh, there are 43 English speech sounds, as I teach them on this chart, 25 consonant sounds, and uh, I'm going to go to draw here on Microsoft Word, and I'm going to uh, pull up we'll use um, black here okay so there are uh, let's draw a line here between everything above this line are the consonant sounds and everything below the line are the vowel sounds so we're going to start out and let me make sure that we're centered properly here we're going to start out with the uh, consonant sounds. The first row, all the sounds are voiceless. You don't use your voice. And on the chart, any of the sounds that are green, including the X down here, uh, are voiceless. Any that are red are voiced. And I have a little code here if they, um, well, so the second row these are all voiced consonants. In the third row, you have Roy voiced consonants, but I made the red a little darker shade to show that these are nasals. And for the kids, I use a, a cute little saying. I, the top row, these are the quiet cousins. They're voiceless. Then we have the noisy cousins. They're voiced. Then we have the singing cousins, because you can actually sing mm, or mm, the, those sounds, the nasals. And then the others, we call the neighbors. And of these neighbors, three of them are what we call liquids. And I've made them a, kind of a pinkish color. And the Q, U, and the X are actually combinations of sounds, so they're not counted as sounds. So let's start. We're going to go down the column. Uh, we're going to go down in the column. So the first one, and we're going to number them so we'll see that we come up with 25 when we get done. And then we're going to go down and we'll go through the vowels a little faster than the consonants. Uh, by the way, we're working from the front of the mouth to the back of the mouth. So the P, the P sound is made in the front of the mouth and the H sound is made in the back of the mouth. And we're progressively working our way 
back so there's a scientific organization to the chart that will help you to teach the speech sounds. If you have students that have problems with speech, this is just great because you're actually going to be a speech teacher as you are teaching your phonics. So, um, so the first sound then is going to be p as in the word pig. And I'm going to be giving you the, uh, I'll be saying the sounds the key word and then we of course have the picture on the other chart and on the on the cards the second sound is going to be b and it's actually the voiced counterpart so if you say p you have oh by the way we don't say p we drop off that what's called a schwa sound at the end the uh sound it's kind of a short short u sound um, and we just say p and that puff of air that's there in English is called aspiration. Uh, you don't have that in Spanish, but in, a, in English we do. And so we have the p sound. The second, then we voice it. Now we have the b of bear. Bear, b. Next we have the nasal sound. And notice in all of these, your lips come together. There's a technical term, bilabial, and I can give the technical term for all these, but this is supposed, I want this to be a practical thing for parents and uh, new teachers, so we're going to really focus on what you need to know to teach blend phonics successfully. And, and while this is tailored to go with blend phonics, it can be used with any phonics program in the world. If you're using another phonics program, you can still use these. And the science behind this uh, concerning the English linguistics is the same for all, uh, no matter what approach you use to teaching phonics. So so we have the p, the b, and the m. That's three of our 25 sounds. Pressing on, going towards the back, a little closer to the back of the mouth, we have the wh sound as in wheel, wheel. It's a voiceless sound or one of our quiet cousins, so this will be sound number four. Now the voice counterpart is wh as in wagon, and we're going to call this number five, wagon, wh. The Q U is actually the K sound, which we'll get to in a minute, plus the W sound. So there's no new sounds. So I do not count this as another sound. But when I teach it to the kids, I want them to learn qua. And the key word is queen. Queen, qua, qua. Uh, the scientist uh, linguist will actually draw two lines like this. I'm not going to do it as we go through the program, but but they will do that to show the, that we're dealing with the uh, s speech sounds. Okay, our next column. Um, by the way, I've actually put this down here that the QU makes the qua sound, and it's red because it's voiced. Number six. Now we have the voiceless labiodental. F, f. And by the way, it's good to have a mirror. To, to watch your mouth as you form these shapes as I'm teaching them you can watch and then you want your student to watch you very closely and it's good to have when you teach phonics to have a mirror for the student so they can look at their mouth as they're forming the sounds very helpful so we have f as in fan fan f. the uh, voice counterpart to the f is the v V, v. You have to say it pretty fast. You don't want to say V, just V, V. This is sound number seven, V, and it's the voice counterpart of the F, and we use the, the uh, key word is Valentine, Valentine. The eighth sound is the voiceless TH, as in the word th three. So it's just th it's not even much of a sound. I tell the kids to stick out their tongues. They can see their tongue as they do it, sticking out from their teeth, as in th three. The voice counterpart, this is going to be sound nine of our 25 sounds, is th, as in the word this. Not a lot of objects that you can use, so we just use the word this. Th. Number 10, these are called alveolars. And I'm going to make a very important point here. 
when the words are close together or the sounds excuse me are close together on the chart beginning students who are developing discrimination between the vowel so uh, consonant sounds and vowel sounds too, but between the consonant sounds will sometimes confuse these and I'll explain that in just once one second here the first sound is t as in the word top like a, a, a boy or girl's little top they play with now this is sound number 10 so we have t in top t and don't say t students you don't say uh, t op when you say the word top you say top so it's just a simple aspirated sound t t no, number 11 we have the voiced counterpart to the t which is going to be d and it's a very quick sound don't say d it's just d really really quick d d and the next number 12 is n it's the voiced sound like we call these the singing cousins these three as we go the, do the row the singing cousins n as in nest and right here I'm going to explain that sometimes the kids will see the word for example the word can and they will say cat and the reason they do that is because the T and the N are both what we call alveolars or the tongue is touching the roof of the mouth behind the teeth so there's a tendency early on to confuse these and it's really helpful if you know that because when they make that and they may see the word uh, cat and say can they'll see the word um, and and they may just say an or they may say ant and then the uh, next sound is a uh, uh, let's see the N was nest I hope I said that nest is the key word there and uh, the key word for the D I'm sure I missed that uh, is I believe I missed it is duh in duck I want to remember to teach these duck duh nest n, and then we have leaf l, and this is sound number 13 leaf l, and the air comes out both sides of your tongue but they are all alveolars and it's voiced I make it kind of pink because the L the R and the Y are often called liquids uh, 14 we have the s of saw saw s. and notice you don't say s it's just s. 15 we have z of zebra zebra z. so it's the uh, uh, voice counterpart so you have the s is s the Z you just make the same move your mouth the same way but turn on your vocal cords Zzz. you can even have the students touch the their throat the vocal cords there and and uh, feel that number 16 we have uh, rrr. 16 is rrr of the uh, key word here is let's see the key word for Z was zebra and S is saw. The key word for R is rabbit. Notice it's not er. It's just rabbit. It's not R. Uh, rabbit. 16. And again, it, uh, it's, it's called a liquid. And we're going to see when it comes with other, uh, when you use it with a vowel, it'll change the sound of the vowel. Now we're going to do uh, 17 sh of ship ship sh and again not sh it's just sh of ship and this is called a consonant digraph as where the th is uh, it's two consonant or two letters consonant letters that make one sound and it's important to let the kids know that they don't necessarily need to know it is called a consonant Digraph, although you can teach them that, nothing wrong with it, especially the older ones. 18 is, we're going to have to handle this and really carefully. It's the z sound, so it's the voiced s, z. And we use the word television 
because the S I in television makes the J sound. Also, the uh, S U in pleasure and treasure J. I wanted to teach this. Uh, usually, usually they don't. We don't teach this to like little bitty kids. But I like to go ahead and teach the sound. And uh, in uh, blend phonics, um, you won't actually read any words with the j sound till the very last lesson where we do pleasure, treasure, and measure. Okay, uh, going down the column, we have the what? Uh, let's see. So television was the key word, and then uh, 19. We have. Uh, 19 we have the y of yard yard y and again it can also be used as a bow as we'll see later it can have the e sound it can have the i sound and it's, and you can even have the short i the i sound when it comes second in a you know a word um Okay. Continuing on with our consonants after y of yard, we have the ch, ch, which is going to be sound 20, ch of cherry, cherry, ch. Next is going to be the ch, the j here, uh, 21, ch of jar again it's the it's the voice counterpart so we have ch and then we have j ch j a very quick sound there the g can also have this sound and we brought that up down here the g can have the sound of g and the sound of the sound of g and the sound of j also um okay 22 Sound 22 of the consonants, we have the k sound. Notice we're back, way back in our throat. It's called a velar sound, k. And you don't say k, it's just k. As in... Um, k as in the word key. All right. Key, k. Key is our um, picture word there, our key word, k. Next we have 23 with the g. G. It's the voice counterpart of the k. So you make a k and you turn on the voice, you have g. 24 is mm, as in the word swing swing mm. and uh, in the blend phonics program we also teach the ngk mm, as in the word uh, tank thank bank uh, x is not a new sound so we don't count it and it is actually a k and an s and it occurs at the end of words. We can draw a little line there with our pictures. We actually draw lines with the sound to tell you if it's the beginning, the end, or in the case of j in the middle of the words, so we have x. And finally, sound number 25, when we finished all of our consonants, we have the huh sound way back in your throat, call it a glottal sound. It's a huh, uh, as in the word horn horn in the middle here we just have some information the C has two sounds it can say k or it can say s and it does that with e i or y which we teach the s can sometimes have the z sound this is there's actually a lesson on this but this is usually not a problem like the word is and then the g we've mentioned can have two sounds g and and there, it doesn't have rules exactly like the C, but usually it'll have a E after it when it makes the just sound. 
and then um, oh, the X here I've actually written X equals K KS the pH sound we didn't mention it but it can make the f sound and on the chart we actually list the, the P in big letters and the pH in smaller letters and then you have some silent letters the GN says N as in Nat KN says N as in No and WR says er as in wrong and then the CK um, ha, uh, it's not a separate sound but it's a uh, constant digraph k, used after a short vowel and then TCH uh, at the end of a word with a short vowel have that ch sound be spelled TCH as in the word match All right, that takes care. <clears throat> excuse me. That takes care of the cons the 25 consonant sounds. So now we have 18 sounds to go. We have 10 short and long vowel sounds, three R controlled sounds, and what five of what I put together is uh, just spatial sounds. So 43 sounds all together. The five short vowels are red. The first one is. A ah, as in cat, <clears throat> cat. The two line, the lines on each side are very important because they signal that this is a short vowel, following the rule that if a consonant follows a vowel, the vowel will be sh at, at the at a word or syllable, the vowel will be short, <clears throat> unless there's a final e. So anyway, um, we don't have to. We could put a brief on top of these to show that they're short, the way the dictionaries do in a lot of phonics programs, but it's really not necessary because that line right there tells us, gives us all the information we need to know that it's short and to contrast it with the long vowels over here. So, first one is a ah of cat, the second is a ah of bed, and we're going to number these 25. This will be sound 26. Okay, 27 is the short E, uh, which is E, eh, and the b word we use for that is bed, E, eh, bed, and the s what we call the second sound of EA is E. Eh. 28, we have E eh in fish, fish, E. Eh. 29, we have aw ah of top, aw, ah. and this is sound, if I could make my mouse work here, 29 is aw ah of top, and then we have 30, and we're going to use duck again, we use duck for the duh sound, but now we're going to use it for the uh sound, so it's going to be duck, uh, and we're using we, we're purposefully using words that use the sound inside of the word rather than in front of the word and it has to do with co-articulation and some other things but I think it's better for the students to hear it inside the word and that's why we do that okay five long vowels this is going to be 31 so we have the A of cake and all these are called secondary spellings, A Y A I E A. And for your information, since you can't use I at the end of an English word, A I is used usually at the um, inside a word, okay? And then A Y is used at the end of the word. And then uh, E A sometimes is in the word bear. Uh, can have the A sound, and we call that the third sound. It's not okay. Uh, then we have uh, 32. Sound 32 is the E of tree, and there aren't very many words that have the E dash E. I went ahead and put it here. Usually it's spelt with the E, e sound or the E A, and you have E at the end of a word or syllable, as in B, we, me. And then uh, the E at the end of, of a, of a multi-syllable word, such as baby and maybe. Okay, 33. Oh, by the way, the E, of course, is silent there. Uh, 33. We have the 
i see the e of tree the um i of five we use the number five five i and it's at the end of a short word like by my cry it's it's spelt just with a y and an i g h as in light those are the main ones and then i capital i of course so 32 33 34 we have the o as in rose o rose and i didn't list o e but o e as in toe and you because you got the o and the e here just drop that consonant then you have um um uh, o a this is o w as in low or mo and we call it the second sound reserving owl for the first sound and then we have o like the end of a short word like no go and 35 this is the oo of mule mule and there's really two sounds to you we're just we don't go into that the kids generally don't have a problem with it. and we have oo of oo as in the word few so our key word here is oo of mule now 30 sound 36 now we have three r controlled vowels so 36 all right is the r of car car r 37 is or as in fork and be careful that the littler kids don't say orc try to put the r on the end just it's you just have to tell them or fork or now 38 there's three basic ways to spell this and we use the er of fur and I have a picture of a fur coat so we have or we could have used er of nurse the er of, of uh, her h-e-r and the er of first and then here we have er as in the end of a word like doctor so that's 38 39 we have the aw of saw. So we use the word saw for the S sound, saw. And then here we use it for the aw sound of, um, of saw. And again, the AW is usually used um, at the end of a word, an AU inside of a word, because you can't use an English word with a, generally speaking, with a U. And then we have all. Let me make sure we got that centered in our thing here. Okay, uh, 39, 40, we're almost done. Here we have owl, and this is going to be the owl of cow. Owl, and I call this the first sound because O-W says owl more than it says O, the second sound over there. So, owl of cow and owl of ouch. Again, the O-W used at the end of a word and the O-U generally inside a word because you can't use in the word with uh, by the way aw is generally called a vowel digraph because it's a single sound but ow ow is called a vowel diphthong because it, it's composed of two sounds ow you can hear ow you can watch your mouth move 41 is oi as in boy and oi as in oil and and notice here boy it's used at the end of a word and oil it's used inside a word and that's because you can't use end an English word with an I and it's good to tell your students that especially the older ones 42 hey we're sailing here we're almost and uh, the key word there was boy boy oi uh, 42 sound 42 is oo as in moon that's the long sound oo as in moon and sound 43 if i can squeeze it in here okay that's a three right there is uh as in book and uh the word put a few other words uh of put so there you have it, 43 sounds of the English language, and these are the major 
sound to symbol associations, also called phoneme to grapheme. Some people would say sound to letter. The letters are the symbols, whether it's one or more working together for one sound or to indicate two sounds. And it's important that the you teach these to your students. And again, we'll just show you here for interest sake. This is the chart with all the pictures on it. So the charts are exactly the same. I put the the oo the, uh, and the uh side by side over here, but otherwise the two these are the five um, well well these are the what we call the voiceless consonants, the uh, quiet cousins. These are the no uh, <coughs> excuse me, noisy cousins, they're the voiced sounds. These are the nasals, the singing cousins, and these are the neighbors. And again we have the three in the middle here are the what I call or what are often called um, uh, liquids, and then the, the q, u, and the, and the, I mean the qua and the x are not actually extra, uh, extra sounds. And then we have the five five short vowels, five long vowels, the three a r vowels, or, or excuse me, the r control vowels, including a r o r u r, and then finally we have the five spatial sounds. So there you have it. We're happy to um, have been able to present this introduction to the um, linguistics and with this when you understand this it will help you to be a much more a better more successful um, blend phonics teacher or if you're using another pro program the information will also prove valuable there and again you can use the other two documents the um, one with um, the facial diagrams is very, very complete and detailed, but it would have taken us hours to go through. So thank you for bearing with us for 31 minutes, and we look forward to seeing you with our next video.